Hi, I'm Mary Stewart Adams and I'm the program director for the Headlands International Dark Sky Park in Emmett County. I'm here today to introduce you to our planetary trail, also known as our Dark Sky Discovery Trail. What we've done through this trail is give an interpretation of the planets, their discovery, and their story through, through the cultural lens of history. There's a great deal of information available to us from the scientific community about the planets and the planetary bodies, the periodicity of their orbits, the chemical composition of the atmospheres, fabulous pictures coming back to us now from the Curiosity rover on the planet Mars. But what we've decided to do here at the Headlands is to give the, the story that's coming from the cultural life around planetary discovery. We started with the dwarf planet Pluto. Pluto was the only planet that was discovered by an American in 1930 and it had a short-lived career as a planet. In 2006 the International Astronomers Union voted on the true definition of a planet and that disqualified Pluto. But still it's a good starting place for this kind of a trail because it gives us the opportunity to talk about what are the decisions and who are the people that make those decisions with regard to what belongs to our planetary system. This cultural docent here has the name Phoenicia Bernie Fair. She was 11 years old when she was with her grandfather at the breakfast table and she named the planet, she suggested to him rather, the name for the planet Pluto based on the god of the underworld. This decision she made because the descriptions of the planet reminded her of the god from the Greek and Roman mythology. So we're taking that as our cue to talk about where did the names, the ideas, the beliefs, the stories come from about all of the planets that belong to our system? We'll take a look through the local culture, we'll take a look historically through those astronomers that discovered the outer planets through the use of telescope, and then we'll also share some of the ceremony and celebration that belongs to the inner planets that have been known since the earliest ages of mankind. So join me as we take this tour. Here I am at the station for Neptune. Neptune is the furthest planet recognized in our planetary system now, and in the Roman pantheon, he's regarded as the great god of waters. Now, why did we reach all the way back to ancient Rome's when Michigan is so full of water? Because the planetary name that most of us recognize does come from that Roman pantheon. But on this board, you'll find story about the Anishinaabe story of the water panther. Now, water in this area was very, very important. So what we've sought to do in this particular station is to demonstrate the connectedness between the planets, the stars, and the local geographical environment. So when you pass through this particular planetary station, we hope that you'll learn about why water was so important as a way of life to the local people and what it meant in former cultures as a god or a divine being. Let's move on to Uranus. So here we are at the station for the planet Uranus. Now, this gentleman behind me doesn't look much like Uranus, but he was active in the local Mackinac area during the same time that the planet Uranus was being discovered over in Europe. Now, his activity, Charles Langlade is his name, as a war chief, as a hero, as an officer, brought a great deal of change into this community, just as this, the discovery of the planet Uranus brought a great deal of change in astronomical research, discovery, and belief about the influences coming toward humanity from the planetary world above us. So you can see at this point, we've met Venetia Fair from the 20th century. We've seen a, a Roman sculpture of Neptune, and now we have a local figure from the history of this environment here where the headlands is. So throughout the trail we have this kind of mix between the different cultural effects in history and in contemporary culture around what is it to have a relationship with the planetary world around us when we're not necessarily using a telescope. Uranus is uh, demonstrative of important change because it was the first planet discovered using a telescope. So it's a very important piece of our planetary trail. Next we'll move on to Saturn. Here I am with Claudius Ptolemy at the planetary station dedicated to Saturn. Saturn was one of the first generation of gods in the Roman pantheon, and he always was the, the guardian of time. So at this point, it's time to say thank you to all the folks who were involved in making this trail possible for us. The Michigan Humanities Council, and also the Little Traverse Civic Theater, who donated the costumes that you see some of our guests wearing, or some of our cultural docents, rather. This particular gentleman is from the local community, and we had great fun with him taking the photograph that allowed us then to blow up and make this board that you see standing here. Each one of the cultural docents comes with an audio text that you can access by looking at the or dialing the cell phone number or using a QR code reader to hear Claudius Ptolemy speak to you. What he'll speak to you about is his planetary model which was the, the 
earth-based and earth-centered system that was uh, taken away by the belief in Nicholas Copernicus's idea that the Sun was at the center of our system. So at Saturn we begin to see a shift and a change in the thinking about our planetary system and the relationship between the human being and the celestial environment around them. Very significant figure in that history and also a very significant place on our path. While we were making this dark sky discovery trail, the team of us working together had a great deal of fun noticing the mood that overtook us with each different planet. Now when you get to Jupiter, it's pretty exciting because Jupiter was the planet that Galileo first looked at when he used his telescope to look into the night sky. We've placed him here right at the fork in the road when you are driving into the headlands because he does stand at a critical point, a turning point in the history of humanity's relationship to the night sky. So along the way we've tried to demonstrate how it's not just a given that these planets belong to our system and that they're always understood one way. That understanding changes over time just as the beliefs that we hold now will change and grow as humanity learns more and more about the surrounding celestial environment. Galileo was, uh, g suffered a great deal of trouble for what he believed to be the order and orchestration of our planetary system. And when you stop at this station, you'll found out, find out why. Now, join me next for Mars, the Great Warrior. As in the cultural history of the red planet Mars, this particular station created a little bit of a challenge for us because our intent was to include some of the history of the local indigenous people, but to not uh, fall into a stereotype that they were just a warring, aggressive, and very active people. The warriors in the Anishinaabek and Odawa culture were actually quite noble and exercised a great deal of integrity when it came to protecting their lands. And so with this particular station of Mars, after we've traveled millions of miles through through space, thousands of years through history, we decided to take a look more closely at the intimate nature of the n native local warrior here at Mars. Meet me next at Earth and Moon. How do we give a cultural interpretation of the great Mother Earth and its only satellite, the Moon, that will represent what this means to all people? What we chose here at the Headlands was to interpret this particular station according to the artwork of a very well-known North American native artist, Norval Morisot. So you see behind me, we have a rendering of a story that comes out of the native tradition that is related to the Earth and then also to the moon. At this point in the Discovery Trail, we've really tried to incorporate lots of different cultures. You'll find along the way the Greek, the Roman, Egyptian. We've touched into some of the Italian Renaissance as well as the Anishinaabek from the local community here in northern Michigan. So as we journey on down the path, getting closer to the sun and closer to the dark sky viewing area, you'll see yet again other interpretations. Join me. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies, and all that's best of dark and bright meets in her aspect and her eyes, thus mellowed to that tender light which heaven to gaudy day denies. So begins the board describing Venus, goddess of love and beauty in many cultures around the world. You'll notice at this particular station that we made really good use of the natural environment and this, uh, this tree had come to the end of its life and so we allowed it to be the support base for this board. When you look at the construction of these boards you can see that each one of them includes uh, a combination of imagery, artwork, poetry, history, photography. It's really been quite a journey to work with the group of people who came together to make this path a reality and we hope that you really do enjoy it. And now meet me down at the next stop with Mercury the Trickster. Mercury, Tehote, Hermes, these are the great trickster gods. They're quite mischievous and you'll notice when you come along our path that he's tucked in around the corner. You could pass him right by, but that would be at your own peril. You need to pay attention to this god and to this particular planet as it's moving very, very quickly around the sun. It's never very far away from the sun, nor is this particular planetary station. Second to last stop on our planetary trail, we're just about to head toward the sun and to the dark sky viewing area here at the headland. International Dark Sky Park. Join me. 
By far the number one question that we get at the Headlands is when can I see the Northern Lights? Well, for us here at an International Dark Sky Park, the answer is easy. The more you hang out here, the more likely your chances are to see the Great Northern Lights, or also known as the Aurora Borealis. And here, at the final station on our planetary trail, I'd like to say that there's a long list of folks who need to be thanked for helping to make this possible. I mentioned earlier the Michigan Humanities Council, as well as the Little Traverse Civic Theater, but we also have Emmett County Parks and Recreation Director Lori Gaetano, Communications Director Beth Peel, IT Director Gary Apold, the Emmett County Board of Commissioners, and a lot of photographers, writers, posers, actors, poets. There was a great deal of collaboration that made this a marvelous project and we hope that you'll derive as much information and entertainment from it as you join in a journey down this way as we have in creating it for you. Thanks so much and hope to see you under starry skies at the Headlands sometime very soon.